Okay, guys, so thank you for coming along today on behalf of Jane and me. We have Cameron Parring here from Tally Money, who's going to give you some background on Tally and their ethos and values. Good morning, Cameron. How are you? Hello, Steve. Hello, Jan. We had a very successful meeting the other night, Cameron, and, and it was a first chance to chat. It went really well. We had a good attendees. We're running this again because we never got the recording we wanted. And we want to use it to help promote your service because mm -hmm. we see it as a really valuable service in these times. I think those of us who are aware of the of what the future that's planned for us are looking for some viable solutions, and particularly where it's concerning their money, they're looking for ways to protect it and safeguard it, and um, so that if the demise of the banking system does go to plan, then they will still have access to it. Yeah, you know, as a general kind of sharing of values, we think people should be self-responsible. They should have options. What you guys do with the Good Food Project and if people are not satisfied with what's sort of uh, coming down the pipeline in a way by the mainstream system, we we should be able to dig a bit deeper and actually find a product that's more suitable for us. In your case, not all food is the same. Some is nutritional, some is full of things that aren't very good for you potentially. The same with a product like money. Money to me is just a product. The Bank of England's a product provider. Their monetary product's called the Great British Pound. And it has characteristics and attributes and that, that whole system in my view, and certainly that of our customers, I assume, but in my view is it's a state run system that is failing the public. And if that's the case, then actually it's incumbent on the likes of us, new guys in the private sector to come in and effectively we'll fill that gap in the market. So if you're offering, if you like, artificially sweetened, non-nutritional value money, we will come up with the nutritional form of money, something that's actually good for you, that works for you, that in your protection, not to protect and benefit a financial institution like a bank that, that has to work to your detriment because you have an adversarial relationship, legal yeah. relationship with bank. That's, I think, where we have a shared outlook on things. There are some other pillars in society that, thankfully, some other people are addressing. But, but yeah, we, for those that are... Uh, Aware there are problems and seeking solutions, that doesn't make you a weirdo, that just makes you intellectually curious, which used to be quite a good thing. You get shouted down for that. And that's really it's that kind of fundamental common sense thing where Charlie's come from. And ultimately, in society, whatever's being served up to us, we're only ever really trapped if we're trapped in a monopoly. Yeah. That's why we need choice in the type of money we can use and access to an everyday account and use a debit card. That makes sense. And just for the audience sake, there is a sort of reactions button there that you can use, which um, gives you like a wee thumbs up. I'll do one just there. You should see it. So just to make sure that's working for you guys, could you use that little icon and just give us a, a thumbs up to make sure you've got access to that? Or a thumbs down if you're completely bored by what we'll just saying. Well, oh, yeah, that's good. Good, good. Yeah. Okay, so you can use that in. Any time if you agree, that kind of helps us. There's also a Q and A section there, and you can ask any questions, and we'll pop them up on the screen. So you can see across your little panel the Q and A. You guys are all muted. It just makes for a better meeting in terms of audio quality. I mean, your initial work is particularly exciting, Cameron, because it offers us a solution for those people who are looking to protect their money and. But it's still somewhat within the framework of society, but slightly disconnected. So people aren't feeling too vulnerable. Yeah, we, we thought we would like you to come on and ex just explain a little bit more about what you offer. Yeah, okay. What we designed with Tally was effectively sound money. So money should have three elements. It should be a, a good store of value, a medium of exchange and a unit of account. Clear currencies like pounds is a great medium of exchange and unit of account. It's a terrible store of value. It's designed to lose value, which sounds controversial, but it's not. There's stuff hiding in plain sight. The central bank, uh, the Bank of England's uh, inflation targets 2%. So after you've paid your tax, you're then contributing the money that's left over another 2% of your earnings to the system, which is, and it's a bit of a sleight of hand thing because it's, uh, as Milton Freeman described it, it's taxation without representation. It's a, uh, what is it? It's a diluting of the purchasing power of your earnings so the government can fund usually some pretty dumb ideas 
but some fashionable policies and, and overspend. And inflation occurs by inflating, like you inflate a balloon and expanding a money supply. Now, there are other things that affect price, which is supply and demand. So you might have higher energy prices because there's a war in Ukraine or something like this. That's a price discovery thing. But the underlying, it's like in the ocean, there's a swell and then there are waves. The swell is the inflation. And that is, and that is caused by uh, governments overspending. And to do that, they borrow from their own bank. And to do that, the central bank creates new currency. And, and that then means that, that the pie hasn't got any bigger, but all the slices of the pie is now more slices. So even though you still own a hundred slices or whatever that you see in your bank, it's a nominal amount. Every slice is now smaller and it's purchasing power is just worth less. And so we, to have, so there's a few things you need to have as principles. If you want to like a, like it's a bit of a corrupting, corruptible system, fiat currency, fractional reserve banking, and that's fundamentally because there's no accountability in it. With treasury, a politician and the central bank, they can expand the monetary supply over an arbitrary decision that they think can achieve some sort of economic statistic, um, like GDP growth, which as has been highlighted to people more recently, I think, but not Michael Trio from Amos speaks about this bit, but you really need to look at GDP per capita, like per individual in the population, because that's how you figure out whether the standard of living is going down. Because if you have more people in an economy, GDP goes up, but then that's split by more people. So that's why we feel our, maybe our standard of living's going down or our cost of living's going up in a different way. Anyways, mm -hmm. there's no, there's, they can just make an arbitrary decision to expand the money supply. And so there's nothing anchoring in 20 real store of value. So every tally is a milligram of gold that belongs to the customer. So they're just buying an asset. They're holding that asset. And when they're ready to spend it, through our technology, they can, they can spend, it's gold you can spend, which nobody's done before. And that's really the breakthrough thing. It's technically gold that can buy and gold that can spend in real time. For all, yeah. for all the claim that they have it, they have gold. And the only time you interact with the financial matrix as such, which you've got to, Karen, we've got to dance with that devil because we're all using credit cards and debit cards and banks. Yeah. The only time is at those touch points. So when you do, when you do an electronic funds transfer in your pounds automatically converts to tally ends up in your tally account as tally. And that's where we touched the, the financial system for that time, Tra bank transfer to bank transfer, but in the system and then we're out and into gold. Yeah. So it's it straight over the wall into an asset based full reserve monetary system where you directly own the asset and then you get to use the value of your asset in real time as money. This is. And as I say, the simple way of saying that it's gold you can spend. And then the other time is when you send money to say, I'm with Barclays. If I send money from my tally account to my Barclays account, Barclays don't know what tally is. They need to end up with pounds because that's what they house in that particular account. So that's where it's still my money going back and forth. When I spend on a card, I'm in tally the whole time. At the moment I make a payment, the merchant's expecting to receive 20 pounds or whatever it is. They will get that 20 pounds. But at that point, I don't care because it's not my money anymore. I've got the thing I was trying to buy. So that's it. You have touch points so that it's nice and familiar. Everybody who knows how to use a smartphone banking app and a debit card knows how to use an ATM and all that type of thing. You, you can use tally, which is one of the beauties of it. But the, the characteristics of the money itself are, are far superior to what any bank can offer you. That monetary product is what we're focused on. You have real physical gold bolted in Zurich on your behalf with Brinks that we manage. You have real time liquidity. You have unlimited transactions. You have unbalanced balance protection. So you're not limited to 85,000 pounds. In fact, the financial services compensation scheme doesn't apply because there's no pounds in your tally account, just gold. It really is a better way forward if you do feel the fractional reserve banking system is a fragile system. It's a debt riddled debt based system. The other problem with it is that the money's devalued by design. Once you have 10,000 pounds with the bank or whatever it is, um, next year, that will only be able to pay for 9,000 pounds worth of stuff in today's terms. It'll still say 10,000 pounds as a nominal value in your bank account, 
but in real terms, you've lost 10% of the value. If you measure it against something honest, like gold. And so to put that another way, gold on average goes up more than 10% a year against pounds and mainstream fair currencies. It goes up more against high inflation currencies, but it goes up over 10% a year on average. And it has done since the turn of the century. It does fluctuate in price on the way through. So it doesn't just go up in a straight line. So people should be aware of that. But, but anyway, if your bank is offering you for an easy access account with no restrictions, which is what Tally is, you might be lucky to get 1%. If you, or 2%, maybe up to, uh, depends. Usually there's limitations on what you can put into that. If you put it in for a, a 12 month term deposit, you might get 5%, but you have restrictions and penalties if you try and access that earlier or at a different time. But in any case, it's still not close to on average, averaging more than 10%. And that's uncapped. It, it can be more, sometimes it can be less, but it, And the real, the reason that is, is because of fiat currencies that don't use value on us. Can I just making sure we're caught up here because we had a slight loss of sound there. I don't know what happened. It's yeah, so my screen, my screen froze for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Cameron, I don't know, are you back in the room or are you frozen just now? Sorry, I'm, I'm back in. I was just on a, a Wi-Fi in the other office and it was giving me a slower thing. Sorry, Kim. That's okay. I wonder if yeah, I think, okay, that might, uh, okay, I don't know. Again, this is quite a new system we're using, but I, I've projected up a little question there, which I think is highly relevant, actually, because there is a very good app linked to this account. And they, they, they keeps asking, is, is the spending via app only, or is it a physical card? There is a card, but can they also do a bank transfer, or does the bank transfer only come back into their account? No, so bank transfers both ways. So you can receive money into your Tally account. The cool thing about Tally, we give you an, an IBAN, which is an international bank account number. So you get a, an account in your name with your own account number and a sort code. And even your bank doesn't know that you're now going into this foreign currency, which is actually gold. And that's fine. It's perfectly legal for you to buy gold and own gold. And, and when you go to spend, you're effectively selling that amount of your gold for us to complete a payment. And we do all that at, at the spot price, which is the live bullion purchasing price. It's updated every minute. Once you're in tally, you hold at spot and you spend at spot, which nobody else in the world offers. If you go to a bullion dealer, they always charge you margins on FX and commissions on the layout and so do online gold trading apps. I should mention we do charge you coming in. So on the way in, there's 1.49% is the cost. This covers the a flat effects fee. So it doesn't matter whether you're putting money in on a weekend or what time of day that covers uh, the effects in and the initial goal handling. And then that's it on the deposit. And the other fee we have is an account keeping fee, which is half a percent per annum on the balance. And it's calculated daily charge monthly. So that works out to be one pound for every 2,400 pounds worth of tally you hold. And again, you get unlimited transactions, uncapped balance protection, free ATM withdrawals anywhere in the world. Uh, you get customer support, all, all that kind of thing is covered with the account duty. And there's no minimum or maximum deposit is there. You can put in as much or as little as you want. Yep. You could, uh, yeah, that, that's exactly right. Is that um, yeah. Only what you know. No, I was just going to say, I opened an account and basically, so I got a debit card, which is here. And you can use basically wherever you can use a normal, a MasterCard from a mainstream bank, you can just use this card in the exactly yeah. the same way. Which is ATMs, ATMs all over the world, 40 million merchants around the world. I think it might be yeah. Yeah. the MasterCard's website, online stores. And again, it operates just like you're in some other G7 international currency, except you don't get international transaction fees. 
You don't see transactions three days later in your app. It all happens in real time. And we're just very transparent about what your cost is and what your cost isn't. And to see once you're in the tally, tally verse, we call it like once you're in them, you know, the point of it is to feel safe and happy again about having, a, having money with a financial institution. We give up a lot to banks and don't question it generally just because they give us the convenience of payments. Yeah. If the system used tally and I tried to come on your program and said, oh, use great British pounds. It's not backed by anything. In fact, when you hand it into the institution, the asset's gone. It's now used as security on writing loans, which also causes inflation, which is detrimental to you, the depositor. And you're at risk. We'll take all the profit and it's debt based. We'll pay you a little bit of interest, which is why you've lent your money to the bank because they pay you interest. That'd be a little and tell you to pick up. Absolutely. There's, there's no pitch for it. And, and, and you're taking their fiat currency and putting it back into their financial institution and supporting their whole toxic financial matrix by doing so. Yeah, that's the part of great media is not only because it's quite an adversarial, it's a debtor creditor relationship with the bank. You lend them your money, you are now an unsecured creditor of the bank. The bank calls you a customer and they, they show you a TV ad with horses running on a beach or something. As though we should all don't really look at the detail of what's going on, just feel warm and cozy, which none of us do. Because we all got eyes and ears and we can all it's, it's all safe and effective, isn't it, until it goes wrong. That's basically the modern. That's, the whole construct of it is not safe. It is effective as a medium of exchange. I'll give them that. Some of that tech's fine. But the it's, it's, becoming, it's becoming more and more difficult to withdraw any money any sizable amount, not even sizable amounts from your bank. So it, it's, they are, the access to your money is becoming more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I throw up some questions here? Just, just, just as we go answer something and that may just keep that, they may put some minds at ease or whatever. I'll put this one up. Is your interest like a normal bank? So the reason your bank pays you interest is because they've borrowed your money. Interest, the return on a loan. That's how you know the money's not there. They've borrowed it. And now what you're really sitting in, which is as HMR, HMRC describe a current account, it's an at call debt obligation account. Your bank will never describe it to you that way. But anyway, they've lent your money. Your asset's not sitting in some vault somewhere even though they give you the impression that may be the case. With Tally, you don't get interest because we're not leveraging your asset. We're not lending out against it. We're not generating any, anything off it. It sits in a vault very boringly, waiting for you to use it. And that could be years or it could be days or whatever. It's yours, belongs to you. Just sit. The reason why you get an uplift in return is the, is the capital gain. And so... Gold appreciates by over 10% a year since 2000 against pounds on average, but year on year. That's a capital gain. There's also a, a better tax treatment because it's a capital gain. So firstly, if you're in a, a sort of a top marginal rate of 40 or 45% income tax, interest from a bank after 500 pounds, you're meant to declare that and you're meant to pay that at your 40 or 45% interest tax rate. As a capital gain, your, let's say, just for argument, said 50,000 becomes 50, what would 50 grain, yeah, becomes 55,000. First of all, until you spend it, that's an unrealized gain. So there's no taxable event. When you spend it, you are now crystallizing your gain. That gain is the taxable event. You have a 3,000 pound tax free allowance, and the tax rate's 24%, not 40 or 45. And again, you, it's up to you, the timing of when you might realize that you're just far better off, but it's not interest that we, that you get in tally, it's uplift. Yeah. And and it's, got, it's, sorry, Steve. So I'm going to say, is there a statement that they get? Cause as capital gains tax and things is going to come up cause they are getting a physical asset, can and cut capital gains over time, can't they? If they just left it, Cameron, for three years, they're going to have a capital gain. Is that correct? Yeah. If Steve, we had a hypothetical situation where there seemed to be a new government in town that was upping capital gains tax rates, 
you might just wait in your savings account for five years until the new government comes in, lowers capital gains rates, and then maybe buy that new car or, or whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it only occurs, um, you can have your asset appreciate to kingdom come. It's only a taxable event when you actually crystallize it by making a purchase or sending money back to your GBV account. Mm. You have one, a sliding scale demonstration thing on your website and you can, you can pick the year, say that you deposit the money and see how your balance has grown. And I saw that in 2000, if you put 10,000 pounds in 2014, it would now be value. Your balance would now be around 29,000. Yep. Compare. See, Article record. That's why we do it. Yeah. For going back. And you can just slide it along to whichever year you want to apply yeah. that. And, and, and then you think, what did my bank? And that's on, that's on the, the website address is Jane. Do you want it's www. It's Yeah. Yeah. It's no, it's it's com and there's some calculators there and some more information that you might want to extract. You guys are discerning customers. You're, you're going to do your research here, which is what we want. Yeah. No, indeed. And look, we're happy to get lots of questions about this. It is a little, excuse me, a little bit of a paradigm shift that it's somehow I can have my money, my monetary provider can be from the private sector rather than what I've had all my life, which is that the central bank of the government has provided me with currency that I use. It's not a crypto. I will say that because I don't think, I think cryptos have different problems, but we do need a mainstream alternative currency to what the government serves up, because as we all know, those in power have agendas that may not always align with what's in the best interests of the you know, individual member of the public. And I don't think that's a controversial thing to say. I think everybody realizes that. And therefore what's in your best interest may not always be getting served by others that are always going to be aligned with that. The other thing I was going to mention about the lack of accountability to the money supply in fiat. There's no accountability to arbitrarily expand the money supply and devalue everybody's unit of currency. This is money you've already earned at your job and you're just having holding in a bank. So they can devalue that and redistribute that wealth, which is how inflation works, which is pretty insidious in some ways, but that's how it works. But the other thing is the people who make those decisions about th that affect inflation and affect our purchasing power of our earnings that we already earned with our time, can't get that time back. They don't suffer the consequences of those decisions. And that's, so there's no accountability at the base end of what the unit of currency is anchored to, because there's nothing there. And the people making decisions about the money supply, they don't suffer the consequences of those decisions. Yeah. In fact, usually the bigger the failure, the bigger the promotion. We've had plenty of chancellors go on to be prime minister. You know, yeah. There's more examples than that. But Dutch gold, Cameron tend to over the years outperform inflation? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because that's your problem, isn't it? Then if your money's sitting in a bank account that at lower than, and the interest rates lower than inflation, your wealth is going down, but gold's helping you hedge against that because it's beating inflation. So in a high, if they really keep printing money, we're going to get more inflation. You want to protect your wealth by having an inflation yes. investment. Ideally, I should be able to work very hard, take a year off, learn the piano and come back and the money in my bank account can buy just the same amount of stuff as it did before I left. And in fact, when I agreed to do some work at a certain salary or on a project or whatever it is, I'm agreeing it in today's value terms. I want to be paid this because that's what I could get. That's what I could buy with it. There's something fundamentally wrong that really irks me from a philosophical point of view that as a, as the earner of the money, we should be in control of our money. Not somebody, not a bank that just holds it for the convenience of payments for us. And but it's, it, they can actually be diluting, dissolving away the value of your earnings. Well, they're, and any year, because I don't spend all my money, I might save up for a year. And if that can only buy 90% of the stuff in today's terms, what they've really done is they've written off 10% of my existence while I was earning that money. Mm -hmm. No, 100% of my time, not 90%. I'm like, how dare you? Yeah. So this is one of the things I was really, uh, the constant bit. So over time, you're better off in tally than you, any bank account. And that's a proven thing, but it does fluctuate on the way through. So if you deposit some money, you may find it's a little bit less. 
particularly with the 1.49% fee. And then, but over time, it'll outperform. And that's a good thing. But the thing that I also just hate about banking as a customer, yeah, I don't want anybody meddling with my money. I don't, I don't need it to be in some high performing investment, something or other. I just want it to sit there and I don't want people touching it. And I don't want them putting it at risk. I don't want them meddling with the value of it. It's my, I earned it. Stop. Don't do that. You do you, I'll do me. And I just want to get on. If I can operate in sound money, it's encouraging to be more productive. I should earn more money. I should uh, build up my bank account. I'm motivated to save again. In the banking system, savers, we're really getting mugged off. Like we're just the mugs because we're in a hiding to nothing. The whole system. Yeah. It's heads they win, tails we lose. Yeah. You're still wrong. And so thankfully, about seven years ago, I started working on this concept and with the advent of financial technology and, and even the advent of things like Monzo and Starling and, and, and TransferWise and Revolut, in the last five years, people got used to having a bank with no branch, having an everyday account. Yeah, absolutely. And access with a card. If that hadn't occurred, it'd be very difficult to deliver talent because we'd be trying to get people to have faith in the new currency and that it's a real asset. Obviously, you can trust gold. And, and then also get used to using your money in a different way. And you really don't want to do that. If you want to get good traction, you want to have a new product used a familiar way, which is like Tally. It's a new monetary product. Or you want to have um, a familiar thing used in a new way. That's um, enough. Well, Carmen, because you, you registered under FCA. You, you're like one of those new bands because you can issue an IBAN, a sort code. Technically, they've got a tally band that can take money in and, and push money out. Yeah. So we're not the regulated, regulated entity. We operate with an e-money institution. Mm -hmm. That's see a regulated entity and they issue the IBAN account to allow to do that electronic funds transfer, but yeah. that's just a pay through account. Pounds never sits in that account. It goes straight through and we issue you with tally to your tally account, which is what okay. you see in your. I get that. So, so again, to become an e-money bank, you had to register to one of these guys that provide this. Yeah. To link to the. To link to the banking rails. We, like Tide, we bank with Tide for business, Jen. Yeah. They're technically the same. They're under Clear Bank, I believe. Yeah. Technically doing what you're doing. Uh, yeah. But that, they might be their own. Yeah, they might be their own EMI. I think they are, Tide. But no. for us, the direct ownership of an individual owning gold or, or trading some gold, like selling some gold, that is an unregulated activity. I can walk into a clothes shop and buy a shirt. It's not illegal. It's just an unregulated activity. So goals like that, by the nature of what it is, issuing the IBAN and also debit cards, they are regulated activities. And so we work with a card issuer on the debit card. We work with an EMI on the issuing of the IBAN. But, but they are just the on-ramp on and off-ramp. Once you're in tally, you're holding your money as physical gold that you can use and access in real time. Nobody's meddling with it and it has a nice, healthy increase in capital uplift over time against what your alternative money would be, which is to hold pounds in a bank. Yeah. And this bank in between you and the FCA, they are bought into the idea because you explained it all to them of being the on-ramp and off-ramp. They're not sitting with money. You're not bringing more of the customers to them in a big bank of money to sit in their accounts because it's just going straight through there and straight into gold and back through. Yeah, that's right. And there, if you can imagine, their liability is not to a customer that's holding pounds because there's no pounds in the account they're providing. It's just to pay for it. No. It's, and it's uh, all online activity as well, but you don't have a facility where someone mm -hmm. with cash, they wouldn't be able to pay into Tally. They would have to go through the linked bank account. That's right. So all the value, and this is important for a regulatory point of view too, value coming into a tally account comes through digitally. So through electronic funds transfer, like a bank transfer, and it goes out by the banking rails through a bank transfer out or by using a debit card, which is connected to MasterCard. Now. If you walk into our office with some cash, uh, we can't accept that. If you walk into our office with some gold, we can't accept that. And that's one of the things we do specifically because we're not we're not trying to be outside. This is not a good system for money laundering or for fraudsters or something. This is just an, an honest system with sound money. 
It's just common sense and people can use every day or they can use it to achieve their savings goals faster and still sleep better at night that the bulk of their money is sitting in, in this form. Yeah. So you've got, they buy gold, physical gold in their name in a vault in Switzerland. Their gold is linked to their account, which is in this clear bank thing set up if you, for whatever better way to put it. That account's linked back to the main high street account to get money out. Yeah. Touching the banking rails only occurs when pounds are coming in or a payment's going out to a merchant that wants to, or, or to another bank account that wants to receive pounds. Or if it's a merchant overseas, you use your tally account anywhere, your card anywhere around the world. But as I say, once you've spent your money, you don't really care what form it is. It's not your money anyway. You've got the product you were buying, a cup of coffee or a car or a phone or whatever. And the money coming in, it automatically converts to tally. You're just never sitting with pounds with us. And, and we don't think that's a great monetary asset. So why would we, that's why we don't offer it. If you want to hold some pounds, leave it or send it back from your tally account to your, your Lloyds or your Markley's account or whatever. And it's only, payments can only be paid into that linked account. So you can't set up direct debits like a normal current account. It's only right. one. So at the moment, we can't. We make the funds transfer out of your tally account to your linked bank account in your name. So, and it's just another area to cut out fraud, it's just fraud prevention of that. Anybody can pay into your sort code and account number. So you can receive money from others. But when you send money out from your tally account, it will go to your named uh, bank account. But as I say, you only do that because you've got a direct debit set up with that bank account. Or will you spend it on your cup? Because again, once you spend your money, you've got the thing you were saving up for. Well, yeah. Calvin, could we do some quick fire answers to some of these questions? Yes. Just a little bit. Shall I, um, shall I quickly get, there's one up and I think there was one just previously. Can you do direct debits? We can't at the moment, but you can do direct debits in. You just set that up with your, your non-tally, you know, bank account. Yes. Somebody's asking if you need a normal bank account as a means of interacting with tally, not on making card payments because you get a debit card to that, but as far as sending money in, actually you can get it from anybody else. But one of our anti-fraud measures, when we're onboarding people, we make sure they've already got a UK bank account. So it just, it's, a, it's another fraud preventative measure. You had to be over 18 as well. You couldn't send yes. and set up one for your children, but there is a facility that in, within your own account that you can designate a safe. Yeah, that's right. You can set up some accounts that we call safes, and then you can park some of your tally balance in those. And whilst you can see your total conveniently, we just show you what's in your everyday account so that you're not looking at it going, well, I've got all these savings I could spend on the weekend. You want to park it and leave it there. But yeah, so look, it's, uh, there's more products coming around this because our tech is new. We've designed a monetary system. If you sat down with a blank piece of paper, what should money do? How should it work? How should it be able to interact? That's, that was our starting point seven years ago. We've been live for five years in the UK. Whilst we reiterated and redesigned our technology, our architecture, and even some of the people were recruited and the skill sets to get it to a robust, scalable proposition that it is now in. We have thousands of active customers in the UK over the next 2025, like over the next year, that'll become tens of thousands. It'll grow to hundreds of thousands at least. I've got no doubt about that because there are a lot of people waking up to that. There's a problem with the banking system. There's a problem with the money we get served up and they might not be able to necessarily articulate what's the particular problem or why they don't trust the bank or trust the system, but they see things like government going, we're going to, we're going to pay 20 billion to this idea. And you think, where do you get that? You borrow it. How does this system work? The government borrows from its own, the government bank to fund government spending. But that in a fiat world, you can print money, but you can't print value. Where's the value coming from? And it needs to be stripped off the population and yeah. redirected for a policy. This is a probably quite a good time for this little question now. Karen, we, our audience is what we would like to class as very awake. I know you're very awake to what's going on in the world as well, which is good. And why we're having this conversation. Yeah. Lynn, this is our Yeah. There's a lot of people with sitting with tinfoil crowns on watching us just now and me, me being on another, but I mean, I can just call all the, uh, look, 
critical thinking used to be like a, a good value in a person. For some reason, you get smeared for it nowadays, but I think that pendulum's moving a little bit. But I, I'd call a lot of people, I, I'd say in jest, like they're conspiracy realists. Mm -hmm. Look at what's really going on. And that's the conspiracy. It's not a theorist. I think somebody posted about a year ago, the conspiracy theorists were like 60 to nil. You know, all the things I've been mm -hmm. But it's not It's very few two or more people getting together to, to do something. There's certainly two or more people getting together with an agenda out there. So there's no conspiracy that there's a conspiracy going on. That's for sure. Look, as I, we discussed the other day, but this is money designed by the people for the people. Genuinely, we are aligned with our customers. We provide a custody service. If we, there could never be a run on the bank of a tally because if everybody wanted their gold out, it's there. It's not off to the wind or something. And let's just think, Karen, though, just on this banking collapse, just for perspective here, guys, if all the banks collapse, we would see it coming before everybody else, the royal we. You're also into Mad Max territory out there, no matter which way you cut it. These banks don't go down and business as usual. If they do, if they flip that big switch, the bets are off. Who, who can properly answer that question? Any yeah. one of us could have a guess. It, it, it's Mad Max out there. It's historical. It's never happened before. We would be taken by surprise, but it feels like something like that's coming. Yeah, I know I could answer it. And in some forms it's happened before. So I'll, I'll, the, the problem is it'll just be, a, it'll be the big steal. I'll have to devalue the currency, go back to some form of a gold standard, which in banking, when they came off the gold standard in 1971, it was only 40%, 60% was credit on all the currency that was out there. It was only like a dollar could get you 40 cents worth of, excuse me, worth of gold. So just to quickly answer uh, Catherine McGilchrist's question there, if the banking system collapsed, tally you can do peer-to-peer -peer transactions. And in the new year, we will start having merchants that accept tally directly for our own payment wall. So if you're in the network, you can still use tally. You can pay people in tally. What would be difficult if there was a banking system collapse is someone going, I want to open a tally account and can I send some pounds in if they can't access pounds from their bank? So if you're already in tally, and you've, so if you're looking for a backup bank account that just protects you from the system, this is it. Not another bank. You actually need a non-bank like that provides a, an asset custody. It's, it still needs the off-ramp. No, and I think that's the bit the, the, behind the question that... No, but no, it wouldn't if you've got a tally account. If a merchant accepts tally, which we will have in place next year, I don't go back into pounds. I just go from my tally account to pay good food project, for example. Or Steve, if we were betting on the football and you owed me 20 pounds because Arsenal beats Chelsea equally every time, then you could send me that in my, from your tally account to my tally account, never touching the banking rails. It's where it's the banking rails. Bitcoin would love to have got to that and haven't yet. So that kind of thing could be a long way off for mass merchants, cut Cameron with. Yeah, that's part of the problem. Crypto is, and I, so I was co-founder of a company that went on to be the world's first blockchain industry company to successfully IPO on a stock market. And we listed that in on Christmas Eve, 2015 here in London. So I actually spent a couple of two or three years in that space. Bitcoin was the primary thing. It was very new at the time. And, and it was actually studying the characteristics of Bitcoin that I did a deep dive into the concept of money, the history of money, all these other things. And it was from that experience that actually allowed me to design Tally because I could see then, as could one of my other founder directors, we felt that Bitcoin wouldn't achieve mass adoption for at least 10 years. So that was back in 2014, 2015. And that is true. I think it's still possibly a good five plus years away of being a mainstream alternative and being usable as a medium exchange for payments. There are things I've got in mind in the, in the next two or three years within the tally sphere that may actually help that along because we, the way we've done, if you like, the way we've done gold fixes some of those issues that even Bitcoin would face. But, but we don't do any crypto in tally at the moment. We don't touch crypto because it's a regulatory minefield. You could just get held up by regulators trying to get their head around it. Yeah. Like gold, it's a very simple thing to understand.
I was using more that crypto has created this value, val this valuable safe alternative to fiat, if you can call crypto that, maybe Bitcoin. But they would love to have a way to bend Bitcoin the way they do with their, we've got a lot of, we have never got there and then Bitcoin and they're massive, so it can be tough to convince merchants over time. But again, it's a time thing, isn't it? Actually, yeah, it is. And also a lot of people who have made even millions in Bitcoin obviously realize they can't live in it. It's too clunky and it's not accepted in, in the banking or not, Fran, in the banking world. But also it's very volatile and they know that they want their they got to pay school fees or uni fees, or they've got to update the car in two years and renovate the kitchen in 12 months. They, they don't want to have to sell Bitcoin when it's on a dip. So we have customers now that are coming across from being big believers in Bitcoin, 90% of their money's Bitcoin, and they might have some other investments, 90% of their money's in Bitcoin, and they want to have 10% of it in tally because that's reliable money and it works seamlessly with the banking, with the incumbent system. But they're still not using fiat currency, which is a thing you really peeved off about. Come, come, let me ask this question with my full tinfoil hat on, on behalf of the customers who are asking the banking question. It all goes mad, Max, the banks go down. They're going to bring in some CBDC. They are going for their agenda. The money is still sitting in their name in gold in Switzerland. But the banking system's all frozen. The off ramp's frozen as well. Yep. But the money's safer than it would be sitting in the off ramp somewhere. Sorry? The money's safer than it would be if the banks collapse sitting in a bank. No, absolutely. And we need to know where peer to peer payments. So, yeah, we, but peer to peer each other. But if, if, for example, they switch the lights back on, you would have off ramps again for them to start using card money. Exactly. If a debit card works for a bank, it'll work for us. Yes. So just on that, the didn't quite answer this. This has happened before. So a note, a card, it's called a note because it's a loan note. So like a five pound note is called a note because it's a loan of five pounds. It's a debt instrument. So in the US in, in I think it was the early thirties, they, they used to be on a gold standard back then and they were going through the great depression. And they reset the value of money by making it illegal for people to own private, privately owned gold, bullion, and this type of thing. You could still own some jewelry, but any sort of bullion and things in exchange for money. And then what they did is they made that illegal for four months, devalued the currency by 40%, and they made it legal again. So you could go back and use your US dollars to buy your gold back, except you would only be able to buy 60% of it because your money's now worth 40% less than the US dollar. That's never happened in the UK. What would happen, right? This is my thoughts on that, that Mad Max scenario. The Mad Max scenario won't really come. There might be violent protests in the street because it'll be the big steal. They call it the big reset. It's really the big theft or the big steal. So there'll be too much debt in the system. They'll anchor it back to any part, a gold standard, and they will devalue everybody's pounds and then say, sorry, this is a big mess, but if you want the ATM to work tomorrow, if you want to be able to buy food from the supermarket or get your salary paid in in the banking system, you're just going to have to accept this. We feel very bad, but by the way, because we've lived through this, we're now the experts, so you should keep us in charge. So this will be their pitch. And they will just devalue in one trail swoop in a lumpy way, all the pounds. And then we'll have some accountability. But if you're sitting in tally, that means your purchasing hours compared to pounds has now gone up. 40% in the moment overnight. The pounds in your bank accounts lost its real, real purchasing power by 40% overnight. So you're far better off in this system. You would still be able to do peer to peer, which doesn't sound like much at the moment, but if we have a million customers in the UK, you're going to be able to operate with people who will accept payment in tally and mm -hmm. still sell your goods and services. We'll switch it back on. The payment systems will work, but they'll reset the value. It'll be the big reset. It'll be the big steal. They'll reset the value of what a pound is and not fleece the population by 30, 40% overnight. And it's just a bit now for discerning people who are thinking out with the box and seeing what's coming, doing their research saying, how do I hedge most? Because you're going to have to guess something's going to happen. Invariably something has to happen. It's a mathematical inevitability, even 
Interest rates, for example, can't chase inflation. Inflation's not staying where it was. And the central banks don't have the levers that affect it the way they used to. Just mm-hmm. some debt addled system, not just debt based system, which reserve share currency. Yeah, it'll, governments can't have interest rates go too high because then they'll end up being bankrupt. Yeah. So interest rates are staying relatively low. Like in our lifetime, they've been a lot higher than they are now, but they can't go a lot higher than where they are. Inflation will keep rising up because no one will have the political will to put interest rates up to, to chase that down. And there will be some sort of a big reset. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the US where just getting efficiencies and get the overspending out of the system. And then you spend more than you have. Otherwise you build up debt. Debt has its own cost in interest. So it becomes a vicious circle once you get past the tipping point. But there's a lot of countries in the world that have passed the tipping point mathematically. So it was culture. Just conscious of time. And I think we're back. We could, guys, we could talk on this subject a lot. It's, it's a subject worth it, of having in everybody's mind. Again, a little plug for yourself. Food is a very good asset in the grand scheme of things. So mm-hmm. it like gold, but you can't eat gold. And food is also good. Get, get a couple of grand into food. Long shelf life. It's possible to be wrong for a cheat. If there's anything that happens with the banks at all, the price of food's going to go up. You've got all yeah. sorts of reasons, farmer strikes, war in Ukraine getting worse. Yeah. No, I so so need food could be much more expensive. You could double your money in food as a small investment. There's parts yeah. of your heads and fetch It's strategy. terrible. And it's not a good medium of exchange. Like you still need, we all need money. And this is what I'm trying to address with Tally. If you want to buy some bullion and have a safe at home, go and do that. But we all need money. We yeah. all need your savings for a rainy day or for a holiday. Uh, and some of the topics we're talking about are very serious and you don't want to come away. It's great that the Good Food Project exists because I worry about the nutritional value and all what's going into our food supply and what I'm feeding my kids. And it's fantastic private people take the initiative to do this. And this is what the private sector is good for, right? We've done the same thing in the money the money, I don't know, column of society, we're addressing that so you can have healthy money, feel safe and happy with your money. You're in the, you're protected, you're in a secure environment. I don't think it'll go to a Mad Max stage. It will, our money will be devalued, our pounds, I should say, not tally money. Pounds will be devalued overnight by a large percent and then they'll turn everything back on. Thank you. It'll be like, at least everything works again. Theft is theft. And there's no point in having all this information and being aware of what's coming down the line and not doing anything about it. So well, it's a case of hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. Yeah. And, and what, so one of the things we tell you, I'm not the only one who's realized in depth some of the problems with fractional reserve banking and the currency system. But as an entrepreneur, I was really motivated to come up with a solution. It may not be the perfect solution. It may not be something that some people want, but at least now they've got a choice. We can choose to be in pounds and save up in pounds, or they can choose to be in tally, which is physical gold in a vault that you use in real time. And we're only really poor when we don't have options. And so while we talk about serious subjects, there is a positive thing here. There is yes. a solution. And actually, because tally exists, some other smart cookie will come up with some other form of solution, which is also good. But the human endeavor, the human spirit, positive uh, optimism, the positive nature of the human spirit, that will continue to shine through. Thank I feel so much better now than like in 2008 when Bitcoin didn't even exist and there's a global financial crisis. Yeah. You know, we're all stuffed. We're all cracked. Now we're not. We've got choices and, and that's the best thing. Yeah, it's good to get out. Now, about the last five minutes, Cameron, can we talk about what it's, what's involved in getting a tally account and the special deal that you've got for good food? Yes. For opening a tally account, going with all the KYC fraud, uh, yeah verification, identification, the anti-fraud measures, all this stuff. So we charge 29 pounds for someone to open up a tally account as a one-off fee with the Good Food Project. If they use the passcode or the promo code, I should say, GFP for Good Food Project, GFP 10 off. So GFP 10 off. If they put that in, it'll be 10 pounds off that. So it'll cost you 19 pounds. And you'll be in a safe, secure financial environment that's far better for your well-being, and and it will even motivate you to be more productive in society. 
And it is a very simple process because I've gone through it and there's people there on the end of the line um, or online to ask and they'll talk you through any issues that you have. Yeah, does it give to me? Yeah, we have real people here. This is about people working with people through everything digitally. It affects us all. It affects real people at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I remember for those watching, you're, you're getting to meet the chairman of this business here as well. You're seeing the ethos behind the ideas. We're on the same page in terms of thinking. We're trying to hedge our bets. We're trying to stay ahead of the game, stay ahead of the agenda. Yeah. We we'll get that, you know, HSBC account where you're making the bank up in this kind of way, if you like. And I think that's important for us always. Yeah. And our political leaders, they're not just asleep at the wheel. They're driving us in a different direction. And that's to make us all poorer. Whether some of them have good intentions while they do it or not, I think pretty strongly that some of them have bad intentions while they're doing it. Yeah. But, all of them. but no, we need to look at the end of the day, you've got to be self-responsible. It's good to know that the person in charge of your money is someone like you who is acting in their best interest and not in, in your own. It's, so this is that... the beautiful thing about the private sector. If we make, if we don't, if we don't do what our protocols are and we somehow break trust with our customer. We won't have a business. Yeah. We're all aligned to deliver what we say we're delivering and do it at a, in an effective cost and deliver great value. It's just not the same with the public sector doing things like this, coming up with solutions for the public. They're, as I say, they fail upwards. They don't suffer the consequences of their decisions. They've got no skin in the game. Yeah. Totally agree. Okay, so we'll probably wrap up there. Uh, we've got uh, on the website, Jen, do you want to explain the process if people want to visit the website and, and find out yes. more and links to Tally? Um, yeah, Tally Money have their own dedicated page on our website, which we created under GFP Recommends. So if you click on that page, you will see the link to the app and you can download that. And when you go into it, you can apply the promotion code um, and that will take off your £10 off the activation yep. fee. Yeah. It's a very right. seamless process, so I highly recommend it. Yeah, have a photo ID with you. That's really all you need. And then, yeah, take a few minutes. You're onboarded. And then, yeah, and then you're in a, a safer, better financial future. You and your family. You're in a secure platform that where your money's protected from the fiat system and the... Yeah, what I think time. people would feel the way with the chain's got an account now, you know, have it watch, you, you'd be comfortable putting more or let your feelings. So again, you guys can test the water and try it and some of you are going to want to go in big and some of you get more money than others. You think there's an option here for everybody? Yeah. And at the end of the day, look, you've got a choice now. Use it, don't use it, choose to do it, stay with your bank. It's up to you. And that, that's really what it's about. Your tally's about yeah. delivering choice in, in money. I think so. Okay, listen, thank you again, Cameron, for spending your time. Um, we've got the recording this time, which is good. And I think in many ways, every cloud is a silver lining. I think we covered things differently, and I think this is a better recording for the white yeah. world. Anyway. Yeah, I yeah. think this has been a better one. No, look, I'm always happy to, these are important issues, but as I say, we've got some positive solutions. I'm worried about food. I've got good food projects. I'm worried about my money with the bank. I've got tallied out. As long as we've got it, no, guys. We are trying to solve different problems in, in our own unique way with that awakening head. One. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah. Indeed. Common sense, I think it used to be referred to, but now we're all the way. It's, it's a different world. But, the, but the, the can be, we're always glass half full, but we're also realists as well. There's a lot of trouble out there, guys. That's me saying that we're glass half full head on. There's a lot of trouble out there. Um, anything could happen. You've been yeah. there before when the, who would have believed we were in lockdown and people getting pulled up for all the nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Can't believe where we've been. So we could be anywhere in the flick of a, in the twinkling of an eye with these people. Yeah. No, that's been evidenced a few times over the last few years and you can either ignore all of that's occurred, whether you agree with it or not. The fact that it can occur is the issue. Ultimately, government has the monopoly on violence in society. Yep. If you do something wrong or if you disagree, they can physically harm you and, and lock you up or do whatever. As we've seen in recent, some peaceful protesters recently. And if they've got the monopoly on money, then you're really trapped. If they can debank you, if they can block your ability to make payments, you know, we're, the easiest way to coerce behavior, yeah. short of violence, 
is to control people's access to their money and their mm -hmm. ability to make payments. And, and just George has very little control we really have when they can do that, Carolyn, because they can do that any time and that's where we're at. But listen, guys, that's we we'll leave, leave with someone's grandma. Grandma used to say common sense isn't very common. I think that's true. Indeed. Yeah. Robin, thank you again. Great. Thank you who watched for all your time and uh, much appreciated. And we'll sure we'll get Cameron on again and we'll do a bit more of this and some updates on the progress and new plans, Cameron. Great. And thanks everyone for listening uh, while we discuss these topics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.